Greetings collectors, followers and friends, Tom Hughes here with some more thoughts on painting and today in this episode I want to talk about my personal collection of paintings, uh, the ones that I chose to hang on to uh, for whatever reason and go through them and uh, go through them one by one and tell you why I kept them, uh, what, why they mean something to me and what I think worked in the painting why they're special. Uh, someone someone asked if I uh, would do this in the comments uh, from the previous video about my first six months um, and it was an idea that I had uh, anyway. So to begin at the beginning <coughs> in no particular order you have to excuse me I've still got quite a bad uh, cough so um, this is the first uh, painting I want to talk about and show you. Um, this is obviously Clifton Suspension Bridge. It's one of my favourite spots to paint in um, Bristol. You're looking at the the full span, but I focus on this uh, left hand left hand part. It's uh, painted on a on a grey day in quite flat light, which I really I really love. I love that stillness that you get. Um, I'm not a fan of bright blue skies and fluffy clouds as you're probably aware if you've looked at a lot of my stuff but there's there's sort of an atmosphere when it feels like time has stopped when it's very very calm and you get that in sort of February time uh, in winter I think this is February <coughs> excuse me um, high vis jacket absolutely love high vis jackets and uh, when you're up uh, you know, painting over a couple of hours, you might you might um, not see anything like that for you know a good hour and a half, and then suddenly a cyclist, you know, rides along, and you've got that that neon electric sort of zing going through uh, your vision uh, on the bike, and it just pops so much that against the greys, the sort of soft greys of the rest of the painting, I think it really it really helps create a focal point, and it's just part of the character of the area, you know, people people commuting or just riding through the city. <clears throat> this green here is another nice feature of this um, composition from this angle. The roofs of the balcony are this really bright, sort of turquoisey green, and it always pops, no matter what the weather is or the light is, it just, it's just this sort of electric green. Um, again, against the other greys, I think it's lovely. And there's a stripy awning, like a humbug, black and white, um, which I think is really nice. Um, this time of year as well, the, the foliage isn't isn't in full green bloom, so it's greyed out, which I like as well. Um, this the, is the tobacco factories, uh, the River Avon, and the Cumberland Basin flyover road <coughs> down there. Chucked a bird in there to break up this area. They fly around the gorge a lot. It's probably a seagull or something. So yeah, very sort of attached, very attached to the spot I painted it. Very attached to Brunel's masterpiece of the bridge, and attached to the fact that I feel like I captured the atmosphere of that day, and it's sort of one of my most, um, one of my favourite sorts of. Uh, weathers that sort of stillness that still softness that's the first one some big old dents in that frame <clears throat> um, this is a painting of uh, Gay Street in Bath and it's quite old it's maybe three years maybe four I think three it's got the street furniture it's got traffic lights brake lights all the things that I love about you know, urban painting. Um, the other thing it's got was this is one of the first times that something, a painting really came together with a very wide dynamics. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of big gestural brush strokes in with fine detail. There's a lot of transparent paint with areas of opaque paint, which gives a lot of depth. And there's just a lot of things from opposite ends of the spectrum balancing each other out. Greys 
and the bright lights. As I said, you know, the um, all of this foliage here, this tree is all pretty much all completely transparent, and then you've got a couple of these opaque marks. And when you when you use the two ends of the spectrum, I feel like you get a lot more depth in your work. Uh, so it's something I really try, really try and do a lot of. If every, if every brush stroke is um, just opaque, you have to be absolutely perfect with the colour you've mixed, or the painting can often lack depth. Oh, uh, transparent paint, you can see the sort of scratchy swishiness. There's so much going on there. If that were opaque, it would be completely flat. So the grit and sort of dirt of concrete in a city is easier to get when you use more transparent paint, I think. So that's Bath. <coughs> Okay, this is uh, the suspension bridge again. This is Avon Gorge. Um, you notice the sky is green. I promise you the sky was that colour. Um, it doesn't happen very often. I've only seen it three or four times. It seems to happen getting close to dusk in winter on very cold days. But the sky went green. And it's not, it's not like a northern light style effect. It's not an aurora borealis it's uh I, I don't know what causes it really it's um but it's it's amazing when it happens the sky can turn green um very still day as well hardly any wind so you've just got these light areas of um wind ripples in the water most of it's pretty glassy which you don't see that much down here either so you get this reflected uh, Bob Ross style water effect where everything's mirrored, uh, albeit for a couple of you know wind, wind disturbances on the water. So one of my favourite spots to paint in Bristol on a very atmospheric, still sort of exciting, mysterious day. Uh, so I'm very attached to it, and again, lots of dynamics, a lot of transparent paint. <coughs> Uh, yeah, I was very pleased with that one. What's this? Aha! Right, so this is uh, Seven Beach in, yeah, north, uh, northeast Bristol uh, by Avonmouth. So there's a, there's a footpath, a cycle path that runs the entire length of Seven Beach, goes under the Seven Bridge motorway uh, M4 flyover. Um, this is just down from that and it's contra jour so painting into the sun you can tell that by the sort of halo effects around the clouds the light bouncing off the sea there and um, <coughs> the halo around uh, the jacket. Um, again yeah completely obsessed with high-vis jackets especially in a contra jour painting where the sun's coming towards you because you're painting the shadow side of something fluorescent, which is, you know, when you think about that, it's it's something dark and in shade that's neon. Uh, so how do you mix that colour? You know, that's, that's an exciting thing. And the halo fringe to it is that electric, like, lemon yellow, straight from the tube type deal. Oh, it's not straight from the tube, it's got a bit of green in it. Um... I like the fact that these two just stopped to chat in front of me. This guy was on his bike, um, and this sort of tough workman, this quite thick-set bloke with this tiny little lap dog thing that you would imagine that will have a little pink sweater on and a sparkly collar. I thought that was really funny, um, and I just like the fact that they were they were chatting. They were there for about five ten minutes, just enough for me to to paint them. And then they moved on. So the majority of the time I was painting this, they weren't there. Uh, so it would have been quite an empty scene without them, but I'm glad they came past. Um, again, yeah, it's just one of the things about plein air that you get lucky with sometimes. You're, if you go up with a camera, you're there for 10 minutes. You take some shots and you go home with what you've got. If you're there for two hours, you see all sorts of stuff and it's up to you what you put in and what you leave out. You put in the exciting things, the, the narrative elements, the um, the things that tell the story of the place. 
uh, cranes, love cranes, they break up a horizon well, uh, and Avonmouth Wind Farm with the renewable energy, which I'm a huge supporter of. So I love to see a, a wind farm. <coughs> Uh, this is painted uh, east of Poole, I think. Uh, this is the Isle of Wight, Hengisbury Head, if I remember rightly, is the name of the place. Um, the colour uh, and the transition between blue, turquoise and green is one of the things that maybe keep this. The fact that nature provides these for you, these this this just sort of this perf this perfection of it, it never I said it in another video nature's never wrong there's nothing that clashes nothing looks out of place um, because it's all being painted with the one single light source which is one color and the sp that spot the, the aerial perspective on the Isle of Wight was blued it out it just as soon as I walked up there I was like oh God look at that it happens sometimes, you'll just be strolling along and then it just floors you, like, if that's not a painting, I don't know what is, kind of thing. So everything just seemed to line up. The path uh, le led you through the image in a nice in a nice way. Um, the shadows of the clouds on the, s on the ocean, uh, I love the way that happens, you get these rich, deep, purpley blue shadows being cast by clouds where the sun is above them, the little sailboats. Um, it was a wonderful spot. I had a really, really nice time painting it and got this family with the little girl in the pink coat here. So I liked this group as well. Um, it reminds me of walks I used to have with my uh, parents as a kid. Um, so there are lots of things that maybe you want to hang on to this. <clears throat> What's next? Okay, so this is the, um, this is the, I think, yeah, it's the Brecon Beacons, not the Black Mountains. Huin on Reservoir, I think you say it. Um, this blue here, this may look a bit over the top, like I've, pushed it or overdone it again I swear to you that is the colour it was um, the hills in Wales and uh, the beacons especially can turn the most incredible shades of purple and blue uh, in the right lighting conditions it really is astonishing and that's what that looked like you've got so many sort of weather systems independent of the area created by the big hills that you get these huge sort of storm fronts rolling in and you could be painting in uh, you could be painting in on quite a clear day and you could have a storm front rolling in over the distance and that could yeah it just affects the hills it's it's really amazing um and this also reminds me a bit of Dartmoor which I spent a lot of time in as a kid I've got a sort of deep personal connection to and love a lot so, and it also reminds me of the feeling of freedom you get being out alone in a big landscape, uh, which is a feeling I'm very fond of. Um, just that quiet uh, stillness and independence you get just from walking out onto a hill by yourself. No one's ever inquired about buying this either, which, um, well, I wouldn't sell it anyway, so that's fine. Moving on. This is a painting done of Cotton Brow, which is the road sort of uh, um, just up from me. Um, I've lived in the same area of Bristol for uh, quite a long time. And, uh, well, it's the longest I've ever lived anywhere. Um, and this is a very familiar view to me. Uh, so I'm very attached to it. It's Contra Jour again, Into the Light. And I like the fact that when you paint Into the Light, things that are white can look very different. So this is sort of a grey, purpley shade of um, purpley shade of a white building, which uh, always 
you know, fascinates me how colours change when you view them under different conditions. So, again, the transit van, you've got to have that. Um, love vans, love the shape of them, uh, the brake lights, all that stuff, the sun glinting off the roof. Street furniture, like the 20 miles an hour sign on the road. This is the bare board, the ground showing through, which uh, it was always nice to see. It makes it look a bit more sketchy. If you're lucky, you'll find a mid-tone somewhere in the picture that happens to match exactly the stain of the board. Uh, and you've all automatically got the texture of that doing the work for you of, in this case, uh, asphalt. <coughs> showing a sort of texture of the road. There's a woman there walking down with the, that halo fringe light effect you get on the shoulders and the top of the head. Um, hmm. So yeah, a personal... I like the light and it's personal to me because it's where I live. So it means more to me than uh, a lot of people. <coughs> okay. The only 18 by 8 in... It most so most of them are ten by eight. So I absolutely adore ten by eight. I think it's the perfect. Uh, it's the perfect size. It's you can do a plein air painting quickly at that size, and capture capture things quick. You don't have to panic as much. It's just it's just something lovely about that scale. So this is three cliffs um, in on the Gower Peninsula. Uh, down the road from Swansea and this was in an episode of Thoughts on Painting I I think I had a, either a memory stick capacity issue or the battery was running out but I didn't film the whole thing I filmed the very start and the end uh, but this is one of those paintings where about half an hour in I just knew that it was going to work which happens sometimes You, everything just sort of falls into place for you and you know you get lucky and you know it's just a matter of hanging on till the end and you hope that a cloud doesn't come and cover the sun you know you're going to get there all you need is time and and, and it's going to be a good one and that's how I felt with this uh, that's the ground again poking through which um, doubled quite nicely as sand so that got left <coughs> the uh, rocks sort of catching the sun um, seemed to work and yeah, it it was just one of those paintings where it sort of painted itself. Um, I wish that happened more. Wouldn't our lives as painters be easy if that was the case? This is London. This is Buckingham Palace Road. Contrejour again. It's fancy French words. En plein air, contrejour. Into the light. Um, I know this area very well because the amount of times I've been to London on the National Express coach, the coach station is at the end of this road, so I get off the coach here. So I'm very familiar with looking down this road. And at this time of day, you get completely blinded at this time of year <coughs> uh, by the sun. Again, you've got all these lovely silhouette, silhouetted uh, street furniture things with their own light source in them, the brake lights and the cars, headlights and the uh, traffic light and the crowds. London's so busy all the time, so you've constantly got these crowds of people to paint. There's a big tree down the end as well, which you know means you've got something interesting to uh, add some dynamics in terms of mark making. Um, the sky was palette knifed on. Uh, if you're going to do a light colour and it's very important to get the colour spot on. You've got to slap it on thick. If you know if there's gaps in it, or it's or it's too terpsy, it will lose all of its punch. So uh, if you're going to paint a bright sky, whack it on thick. So I don't paint up here, but that's okay because it kind of looks like cloud. <coughs> um, to me anyway. And the double yellows. I love the fact London has red double yellow lines. It's like yellow doesn't say don't park here enough it has to be red so absolutely whatever you do don't park here um, and the they're not really red they're sort of magenta pink uh, I love and I love the colour of them it's a really interesting addition to generally quite grey scenes to have that 
that, that sort of dirty pink. Goes well with the London buses. Red and pink are supposed to clash, but I think they're quite exciting together. So, last one. Best till last. I, th I think this is the best painting I've ever done. Uh, and lots of people probably disagree with me, but it goes to show how subjective painting is. Um, this is Milsom Street in Bath, and I painted it on a very grey, misty, foggy day, which sort of was reminiscent to me of Dickensian London, and all these characters sort of shambling on through the mist. <coughs> um, this is painted on a very high raised pavement at the end of the road, and it's just, it's sort of compositional perfection looking down Milsom Street. It's, it's, it's just perfect spot. Everything's just in a lovely, uh, uh, lovely arrangement of shapes. And this building is fascinating. It's a, it's a smooth wall, but it has this recess, this uh, deep sort of arched, uh, arched recess with, um, I don't know the history of it, I'm sorry, uh, but there's a, a small stone carved statue in there, but the inside of the recess is painted this sort of terracotta red, which creates this wonderful focal point. <clears throat> I always look up at that when I walk past it, and it just sucks the eye into the middle of the painting, and I think, I think it's great. Um, that's my bike. Um, on this particular day, I rode to Temple Mead Station in Bristol, got the train to Bath with my bike on the train, and then rode around the city painting. So I locked my bike up at the end of Milsom Street and then went up to my spot. And I just thought that the neutral greys, the sort of greeny greys of the painting, make the yellow bike sort of pop. Um, I've said before in the suspension bridge painting when you've got bright yellow next to grey it it does something to me um, I just love it uh, there's a little fleck of green that's a high, high vis cycling jacket again <coughs> here's a couple of lights I think that's from a shop window uh, that's a parking meter with the P with the solar panel on the top and that's the bright roof of a car Bike rack here, so wheel, uh, shop awnings, flag poles coming out of the shops, little chimneys on all these uh, Georgian bath buildings. Very loosely done up here, but I think that's okay because this is busy, so the eyes, you know, focused in. Uh, and it's 14 by 12, which I very rarely paint plein air, but when the light's flat, you've got hours, it's not going to change, so I could go a bit bigger. Um, so my bike's there, uh, my single speed uh, bike that I'm very attached to. It brings back memories of that that time, um, uh, happy time of painting, and it and I felt like I, <clears throat> I sort of, you get it sometimes where you feel like you've gone forward a notch. You've sort of gone into a new chapter, and I really felt like I'd, I'd really felt like I'd sort of done that. I'd, I'd uh, got over a hump with this, and it's got the dynamics that I talked about before, with the uh, transparent paint combined with areas of highly opaque paint. I think it gives depth. So whether you think that's any good or not, I don't know, but that's the favourite. That's the number one. The dusty, dirty, it's in the right state. So, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> which is your favourite painting of mine? Um, you can leave that in the comments. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.